Next on Worcester News tonight, Worcester police are investigating after a 17-year-old drowns at Lake Lee Sigmund over the weekend. Plus, the fourth annual of July Carnival in Millbury is underway. How families are celebrating. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brittany Schaefer. We begin tonight in Worcester, where some swimmers are being extra vigilant after a 17 year old drowned in Lake Quinsigamond. Police say family and friends noticed the man had been missing for about 45 minutes. That's when they called police. Our Rosalind Flaherty has the details. A 17 year old male was pulled from the water at Quinsigamond State Park Sunday evening. Worcester police say he was outside of this designated swimming area when he went under and never resurfaced. Devastating for the family and the parents and whatnot, especially on 4th of July weekend. I mean, everyone's supposed to be having a good time. Police say the teen was missing for about 45 minutes before they were called. We immediately, immediately called the Worcester Fire Department scuba rescue team and the search was unsuccessful until about an hour later. The victim was found about 160 feet from shore in 30 feet of water. He was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. I can't imagine something like that. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's really terrible and I feel so bad for the family. Police say they were told he was not a strong swimmer and no one at the beach area observed anyone in distress. Everybody thinks rules are there to be broken, but I suppose they're there for a reason, so things like that don't happen. Respect the rule, don't swim in uh, in the deep side. Police say swimmers need to stay in the roped off areas and know their limit. If you're not a very strong swimmer, don't go over your head. Make sure you stay with other people and just be careful because it can happen very quickly. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Just two days after opening, the city of Worcester had to close the Crompton Park pool Monday. According to the city, broken glass was found in and around the pool. So to ensure safety, the pool was drained, cleaned, and will be inspected for additional shards of glass. The more than 100,000 gallon pool will then be refilled and have its chemicals rebalanced before it can reopen later this week. Worcester residents like Danny Ortiz arrived at the pool Monday only to find out it was closed. We came and the pool was closed, you know, so it's kind of sad because it's a hot sunny day. There's a lot of kids that come out here and they could get cut and it's not it's not safe for all the kids. And I feel they did the right thing of shutting down the pool. I know it's kind of sad because people want to come in, but safety comes first for the kids, you know. The two state run pools in the city are open. The Veterans Memorial and Dennis F. Shine Memorial swimming pools, along with the city's two spray parks. The Millbury Lions Club is holding their annual carnival and fireworks celebration Monday night. The festivities started Friday and will continue through Tuesday on Wendell Field. Hundreds came out to enjoy the family friendly carnival with rides, games, food and fireworks. Martha Doughty and her father and three year old son were taking advantage and say it's the perfect night for a carnival. My son wanted to ride the cars. <laughs> I came because I like fried dough and I know it's here. Celebrate the uh, birth of our country. Not too big. Family friendly. According to a new survey, Massachusetts lacks in patriotism compared to other states, ranking 48th out of 50. The survey by Wallet Hub took into account military and civic engagement. Martha and Bradford Doughty were shocked. Massachusetts placed. Oh, I bet we're number 10. What do you think? I'm going to say eight. 48. Kind of disappointed at that. Yeah. Because yeah, a lot of it was here. The city's do fireworks. I think it's very uh, disappointing. The Millbury Carnival continues into tomorrow with fireworks starting at 9.45 p.m. While one group is considering a proposal to draw down water levels at a Holden Lake, some residents are trying to save the natural resource. Members of the Friends of Eagle Lake are afraid it's at risk of disappearing. Olivia Lemon has the story. For more than 200 years, Eagle Lake has been a sanctuary for wildlife and a resource for residents of Holden. For a long time, it uh, served uh, industrial purposes from the dam. Uh, there were various mills, uh, linen mills, textile mills, and but it was also a recreational area. Gerald Kersis is a member of the new group Friends of Eagle Lake. Kersis says the dam is in poor condition and one of the groups responsible for keeping it up wants to back out because the cost to fix it is too expensive. One of the complications is the fact that there are multiple owners 
of different portions of this and they each have responsibilities in terms of doing maintenance and doing repairs. The Holding Conservation Commission is proposing to permanently draw down the water level, but the move has some residents concerned. And that'll have a, a pretty devastating effect, not only on the wildlife, that lives there and around it, but also on the recreational users. The Friends of Eagle Lake say they have been working with selectmen to get grants to help fund the project. In a statement, Board of Selectmen member Tim Ethier says it is completely unrealistic to expect White Oak, a private conservation group, to pay for this study and possible dam repairs. It is time for the town to accept ownership of this important natural resource and to preserve it for future generations to enjoy. Cursus is hoping some Something can be done before the lake completely disappears. Our focus is, has really been on, on preserving Eagle Lake for, for the town. You know, we want to make sure people say, I live in Holden, you know, where the town with a lake rather than I live in Holden, a town with a swamp. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. State police arrest a Holden man for driving almost twice the speed limit on 495. State police released this photo of their report. In a press release, police say 22-year-old Plutarco Castellanos was driving 122 miles per hour in a 65 miles per hour zone in Hopkinton. The Holden man was allegedly switching lanes without a signal and passing cars recklessly. Castellanos faces charges including operating to endanger. The Southbridge man accused of stabbing a nurse in Southbridge Hospital is now being held without bail. 24-year-old Connor O'Regan allegedly stabbed nurse Elise Wilson several times last month. Police say he was unhappy with the treatment he received for a wrist injury. A court physician determined that O'Regan suffers from paranoid schizophrenia and claims to hear voices from TVs and radios. Wilson was last reported to be in serious but stable condition. A main man in court today after getting pulled over by state police in Charlton with an alleged huge stash of drugs. State police put out this photo of the drugs they say they found in the car belonging to Stephen Pearl of Patton, Maine. Here's more than 400 bags of suspected heroin and one bag of crack cocaine. They pulled Pearl over on Route 20 eastbound and say he had a license plate which belonged on a different vehicle. Pearl was due in Dudley District Court on an array of charges. A Worcester man charged with running down an Auburn police officer back in February has been deemed a danger to the public. A judge ordered Matthew Ostrander held without bail while awaiting trial on assault charges. He's being charged with breaking into a house in Millbury. In the police chase, he allegedly struck Auburn police officer Luis Santos and broke his leg. Ostrander is due back in court in August. A plastic bag ban is now in effect in Shrewsbury. They are one of the surrounding towns in central Massachusetts to take part. Our Catherine Andrioli spoke with residents today on their thoughts. If, if I do fill them up, I'd always go for paper, not plastic. Paper or plastic is no longer an option for Shrewsbury shoppers. Saturday, the town's plastic bag ban went into effect, prohibiting the use of plastic bags from town establishments. They handed me out a nice reusable bag. I love it. Shoppers were filling their grocery carts with reusable bags, some even opting to go bag free. The town implemented the bring your own bag policy as part of a new town bylaw. It requires stores to use 100% recyclable bags instead of plastic. It reminds me of when I was a kid and I go shopping with my mom. And I also remember from that time that the ocean wasn't full of plastic garbage. The ban has some residents upset. One customer at Price Chopper says he was unaware of the ban. He says he was charged 10 cents for a paper bag and opted to carry his groceries instead. So I don't have any cash on with me, so I don't want to do any other transaction for 10 cents. So um, that's why I'm carrying by hand grocery. Business owner Mike DiPirio says the ban has left him frustrated and unsure of how it applies to his aquarium store. I don't know, I just think it's aggravating. I mean, I got the t-shirt bags that I'm not going to use now, but uh, what about the fish bags? Shrewsbury is one of several towns to ban plastic for environmental reasons, but some residents believe this isn't the best way to do it. It's not helping the goal. It, it's, not, it's not serving the goal from my perspective, which is to stop the use of plastic. It's just shifting where we get plastic. In Shrewsbury, Catherine Andrioli, Worcester.